has got the first two in the Bentley Ida, and the winner is Wickhill. Wickhill the winner for Tom Scudamore. quickly bear with me one second okay perfect <laughs> okay so i just yeah i want to start from the beginning so you're from gloucestershire which is yeah. near where i'm from um i was born in swindon and my family were in siren sister okay and uh, you went to chatham college that's correct yes it? that's correct yeah. uh so your training when did it all begin were you training whilst you were at college or yeah well i was obviously um grew up in and around horses because of my grandfather was a jockey, dad was a jockey, so I always grew up in and around ponies. Um, so they were always around, and then I sort of moved on to riding racehorses, I suppose, when I was about 11 or 12. Um, but race riding, I rode my first race when I was 16, so I was still at school. For my A-levels, I was able to take a lot of time off to go racing, so I was only in there, sort of, uh, school, uh, sort of three or four times a week. Um, so they gave me a few mornings off, a couple mornings oh, really? off a week to go, go and ride out and things. So um yeah I, I always wanted to be a jockey um but you know it was just uh you know, fortunately i didn't grow <laughs> so is your flat racer and a jump jockey is that correct no i started off riding uh on the flat as an amateur um but i was always too heavy unfortunately to ride on the flat i'd have loved to have ridden on the flat um but you know, i've always i've always been a jump jockey mm. um look i think 10 winners on the flat but they've all been high weights and things so yeah. um yeah unfortunately although i didn't grow much i grew too much to ride on the flat <laughs> that's something i learned from your dad yesterday actually that uh jockeys are heavier so jump flat than yeah they are. So, that's right uh frankie the tory would be just over eight stone um mm. whereas like myself we've got to be around 10 stone so uh there is there's, there's quite a big difference so you know, to ride in the derby i think the derby the weight's are about eight stone 12 so that's the sort of weight you've got to be to be a flat jockey so i'm, I'm about 16 pounds too heavy oh wow so i guess do you have to follow a particular diet or um i'm pretty lucky that i can sort of maintain look i'm, I'm pretty strict with with what i eat um but i uh, as long as i'm sensible i i can maintain it comfortably without you know, and to resort to, to addressing those measures. Because I found that very interesting, you know, when I was interviewing your father, learning about what it was like back then and the difference now. You have, like, nutritionists and... Yeah, yeah, we do. We have nutritionists and um, you know, there's a lot more of a sort of support system. Like, I suppose racing is still quite far behind many other sports because we're self-employed, basically. So, mm. um, you know, if you're a footballer, you join the team and they... They look after your physiotherapy, your dietary methods, and your physical condition, and, and obviously mental welfare. Whereas um, jockeys, it's much more in place, but we're, we're generally about ten years behind all the other sports you know, due to lack of funding um, and the fact that you know we're, we're self-employed. But um, things are improving, and and, and the people you know, we're very lucky that we we have a system. The, the, Professional Jockeys Association, who are who are fantastic, do all they can, um, and the Injured Jockeys Fund too. So, mm. you know, the, the networks are there in place, but just you know, we're, we're you know, sports people and sportsmen, and um, you know, we wouldn't be in the same league as as, as the footballers or, or yeah. certainly many other sports. So, does that mean you would have to go and get physio yourself? Um, or um, you... the physios, yeah, physios are there at every race meeting. But if I wanted to get physio outside of it, mm. um, like it's something you'd have to organise yourself. And again. Know, any nutritional things you know, obviously you've got to, you've yeah. got to do off, off your own battery so do you have to do any you know yoga or any other activities to you know with your muscles um, i've done pilates i haven't done too much yoga there are some people that do yoga um i've done a bit of pilates which is good i like all the stretching and um uh, things you know especially it's, it's actually more with the traveling and things you do so i do i think between eighty thousand, a hundred thousand miles a year so um, the stretches and, and things I find much more um, beneficial for, for the driving, for yeah. the riding, probably. <laughs> um, but yeah, you, you try and do, do those sort of things to keep you know, it's, 
you you keep you try and keep your core strong, and because of that, you don't want to be doing too many weights. You don't want to be doing putting too much bulk on. So the likes of Pilates and yoga um, are very good for that. Because yeah. I always wondered, you know, would that be a problem um, putting on a lot of muscle mass? You'd have to go careful how much exercise you do. Yeah, you, you do. Um, so I got hurt in September time, and in order to get fit, I spent a lot of time in the gym. And although I got very fit, I put on too much muscle. Um, mm. So you know, I ended up getting a bit heavier than, than I would be normally. So it's something I had to, to cut down. But it's, it's something you're very quite scared of finding the right balance. You know, obviously, you mm. want to be as fit as possible, um, but you don't want to bulk up too much. Yeah. So you, know, you, you end up doing, end up finding, I find myself that you know, there's plenty of you know, really walking. Um, bit of swimming, cycling, that sort of thing. You know, you're, you're trying to do stuff without without you know, sort of bulking up. So, what do they advise you to do if you have put on more muscle weight? How do you lose that? Um, <laughs> just by doing a bit less work. That's what <laughs> and I then, in fact, look, I have I have a routine, and I stick to that. And look, I do a yeah. lot of power. I suppose you call it power walking, yeah. off walk. Yeah. Um, so for argument's sake today, I've been riding out all morning. Yeah. And I'm go get when I get home, I'm gonna go. And, just take my daughter's riding and that'll mm. be about four or five miles so you know you, when you're doing that every day it, it sort yeah. of helps but you know that's that's where, when there's no racing when there's racing every single day i don't have to do an awful lot so what is your regular routine is it still the same even though it's a lockdown period um i've been fortunate in the fact that because we're classified as key workers because of the because of the animals so um you know We've, I've been able to go in and, and every morning been able to um, go and ride out the horses. Obviously, when the permanent lockdown was on, um, I'd ride the horses and then I'd go home um, and you know, be locked down. But as soon as they released a little bit, I live in a very, uh, you know, very fortunate, I live in a very extremely r rural area. Yeah. I've got about three houses within about 10 miles of me. So yeah. um, I've been able to, you know, right on the edge of Exmoor, so I've been able to do plenty of walking when they, when they released, um, when you were able, able to get out of the house more. So um, from my point of view, I've been very fortunate. I've been able to remain you know, as fit as I, as I can be um, in these circumstances. Mm. So apart from, you know, riding and stuff, what have you been doing to keep busy during lockdown? Or has it made um, them riding? No, there hasn't, been, there hasn't been an awful lot of time for anything else, really, because mm. um, the yard I've been riding out at, uh, is two hours away and they pull out just after half past six so it's been four o'clock in the morning starts um, wow. which is you know, a lot earlier than, than uh, you know, normally look on a, some days I might be up at five you know once or twice during the week but generally you know the, the main yard I ride for David Pipe is only about half an hour away from me so um, you know, most of the time I'm up around seven o'clock so suddenly I have to start getting up at four o'clock drive two hours ride mm. out drive two hours back um, you know, and then when you get back, go for a nice walk and things, it, 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 your day's filled. So, um, yeah. you know, it, there, there hasn't been much downtime um, mm. from, from that point of view. Do you drive two hours every day? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, five, five, days, five days a week, five days a week. But it's, yeah, it's, um, they're, they're, so there were four of us going up from the West Country, so now we're able to, to share the lifts again. So that's that's taken the, taken the thing yeah. out of it. But look, that's, you know, it's... Um, it, it's just the way it is. Mm. You know, we're very grateful we've been able to carry on working, and I'm very grateful that um, yeah, I've been able to continue. So it, it, it hasn't been anywhere near a struggle. I mean, it's it's we've been very lucky, mm. and, and and it's uh you know that it's one of the joys of of being a jockey is that mm. my office is in the outdoors. So um, look, other than all the travelling, um, you know, I'm outside in the fresh air every mm. single day. Normally get to see some beautiful rural areas. You know where. I've been working at the moment with Richard Hammonds. Uh, he's just by Stonehenge there, so you know it's a lovely part of the world. Mm. I say I live on the edge of Exmoor, so um, I'm very, very fortunate in that respect. So, do you work for different trainers, or is it just the one? Yeah, I work for so um, over when I'm obviously on, on any, any normal circumstances. Mm. My main employer would be David Pipe. Um, I ride primarily for him. Um, but luckily enough, I've been. I've watched to ride a lot of big winners for Colin Tizard and for Neil Mulholland. Um, they've ridden a lot for David Bridgewater and my brother Michael Scudamore. So, you know, I'm, I've ridden a lot of winners for a lot of people, but, mm. but David Pipe um, for the last 10 or 12 years has been my um, primary stable and you know, he has generally first called on my services. And was it his father who you first worked for? Yeah, Martin. Yeah, so um, 
yeah, that, he was he was my first first employer in racing. So I've been with the with the pipe stable for a very long time. Mm. So when you first got into it, was it your dad who kind of showed you the way on how to get into it? Uh, yeah, as I said, I, I grew up in and around it, so mm. uh, I was always very single minded and. Um, you know, I always knew what I wanted to do and where I wanted to go. So in my school holidays, I'd go down to Martin Pipes. And yes, you know that uh, that came from Dad being stable jockey there before. Um, but look, you know when I was growing up, Martin Pipe was the best yard in the, in the, the country. So whether Dad was uh, stable jockey for him or not, or not, that would have been the place I wanted to go. And um, yeah, I was lucky to get a foot in the door, and things worked out very well. Then did you ever have a plan B? No. <laughs> I was given plan B's. I was given plan B's. Yes. Um, but you know, in my mind, it was all you know. I was always going to be a jockey. I suppose mm. plan B is being involved in racing somehow. I was, you know, look, I, I got a good education, um, mm. and I was reasonably bright at school. So um, I always had something to fall back on. But yeah. I wouldn't have ever called it a plan B. It was, sort of, it was just there. Yeah. <laughs> Could you see yourself being a trainer when you retire? Really? No, I, no I, I don't think so. I mean, I, I'd love to stay involved in racing. I'd love to, you know, help somebody or, you know, if an opportunity arose, you know, stay stay involved. I mean, I've really enjoyed um, seeing the different side of, of, of racing in the, in, in the flat yards of you know, Richard Hannon's mm-hmm. um, during the lockdown. So that's been really, really interesting. I've thoroughly enjoyed that. And you know, if something was to come up along those lines to stay involved, then I'd be very keen. But I wouldn't, you know, I, I wouldn't want to train in my own, um, own mind, or my own name, um, because as I've seen, I've seen an awful lot of jockeys make a, you know, be very successful in their career, and then as soon as they retire, they give it all back being a racehorse trainer. So, um, no, that's that's not not on the agenda. That's not on the cards. I may I may change my mind, but yeah. you know, I, 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 in hand on heart, I. I want to stay involved, but yeah. it won't be included training racehorses. Mm. So going back between the difference of flat racing and jump racing, is it a different timetable for the horses and riders, or is it more or less the same? Um, it is. It is different. It's a different um, way of training. So with the jumpers, everything is built upon, I suppose, the interval training um, in order to maintain their stamina, whereas on the flat, everything's about speed. So yeah. the longest race on the flat is over two and a half, two and a half miles. Mm. Um, it goes to anything from five furlongs up to two and a half miles, where over jumps, the shortest race different distance is two miles, and the longest race is four and a quarter. So, um, you know, everything towards the jumping is built towards stamina and flat at speed. So on the flat, it's, it's different, um, you know, so it's like, like training a mm. with athletes. You go from training a long distance runner to training a sprinter. So um, you know, the the diets are different. Mm. Um, the amount of work they do is different. Um, so yeah, it's it's it, like mm. rugby union and rugby league. The only similarity is there's a horse involved. Mm. Um, so rugby union and rugby league. There's a there's the same sort of shape rugby ball. But other mm. than that, they're completely different sports. And is the muscles on the horses are they different because? Like you said, one is sprinting. Yeah, I, I suppose you'd say the flat horses are generally that much stockier and well mm. built. Um, having said that, a lot of the flat horses are what we call entires, so they still have their crown jewels, especially the, mm. the boys. So they you know, they go on to become stallions and what have you. So because of that, they're always a little bit more thicker set than the jumpers. Mm. Um, but yeah, gen- generally they're they're just a slightly different shape, not a massively different shape, but you you would you know you would generally say a flat horse is just that little bit more chunky than, mm. a, than, a, than a jumper. But again, there's always exceptions, and um, you yeah, know there's always 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 a difference. Mm. And when you were like an amateur jockey, what then? brings you into the professional side so is it like a certain your trainer would say right you're ready to get into professional or um, that's what happened in my case um, but basically yeah you you try and get established as an amateur like everybody goes into the sport differently some yeah. people jump straight to being a professional um, but I always felt that if I turned professional straight away um, you know I, I wanted to become established before I turned mm. professional um, so fortunately in, in, in my case that happened I was champion amateur and I turned professional so um, 
Yes, it doesn't always happen like that, but that, that was the route I wanted to go. I was just always very conscious. But maybe it was because, sub subconsciously, maybe it's because my grandfather and father have been so successful, I didn't want to tarnish the family name, as it were. And if I wasn't as successful as them, you know, I, as an amateur, it wouldn't make as much difference. But, you know, I, I was a very successful amateur, and, um, you know, then it became clear from very early stage that um, I would be able to make a, a living out of being a jump jockey and that was yeah that, that was the decision that was made. If weight wasn't a, a thing would you prefer flat racing or jump racing? I prefer jump racing yeah um, and I'm you know I, I've been brought up in and around jump racing mm -hmm. so I, I do prefer jump racing. Realistically though however um, the longevity that you can ride for on the flat um, the face it the money is more on the flat as well um so yeah you know given the opportunity i you know my head would say i would have been a flat jockey in my heart so mm -hmm. i would have been a jump jockey but it's um you know it, it, the, the main thing is you're getting to work with resources and yeah and, and to be yeah it's, it's hard to separate the two I, mm -hmm. I, I thoroughly enjoy both sports how come it's more money in the flat racing and not as much in the jump um because well, because of the, the size basically because of mm -hmm. the um, you know the, the breeding industry on the flats is you know worldwide multi-billion pound industry um, and the uh, best sires are all you know if you win if you win a derby or a pre a triumph um, you're worth a lot of money going forward mm -hmm. as a through breeding rights so that that and the, is the long and the short of it why mm -hmm. flat racing is is and always has been and always will be mm -hmm. uh, more prize money in that than the, than the jumps because um, the prestige that, that comes with, with winning those races, um, you know, it's just the beginning. You know, a jump horse, the highlight of his life, if he wins the Gold Cup or, or Grand National, you know, he, he's a gelding. So his progeny are not going to be gracing um, you know, the race courses, whereas when Galileo won the Derby back in 2001, you know, he sired, he's one of the most influential sires of all time. So um, you know, his influence goes on for the next 20, 24 five years yeah. um, and then making a lot of money. Mm. I realised that I don't actually know that much about flat racing because my grandfather always followed jump racing. Yeah. Um, so it's been really interesting to, yeah, to learn. I've... Yeah, and I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm scratching the surface. I'm learning more. I've been pretty ignorant about the flat too, really, if I'm honest. I've been involved in the last, even though I don't look it, I've been involved in the last 20 years jumping. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, Although I've had a passing interest in the flat, having more of an interest in the flat now is, is something that um, I've really enjoyed. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, no, it is really interesting. And also as well, I love that, like, you know, there's so much to learn all the time and you find yeah. out different oh, yeah. things. I've learned so much just by doing these interviews, <laughs> oh, <cool. laughs> which is great. That's one of the main reasons I do them as well, which is fantastic. Sure. Um, that is all my questions. Brilliant. That's all no my problem questions. Problem. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. And you. Bye bye. Bye.